Hello everyone, welcome to episode 94 of this, the Agile Podcast, the podcast where you get a little update from me and Jeff Watts about what we've been doing in lockdown, because it seems to be the same every week right now. I know, but good news, the pubs are opening in the UK from the 4th of July, which is this Saturday coming. We might be allowed to go out for a drink somewhere other than our own garden. Yes, it's true, the pubs are starting to reopen. But we hope you're doing well wherever you might be in the world. One of our global listeners, I'm sure you are. So, um, But lockdown may, may be easing wherever you are. We, re- we sincerely hope that it is. We hope you're subscribed. Make sure you are wherever you get all your other podcasts. We're usually listed now in your podcast provider. So make sure you're subscribed. You'll get all these updates, all these episodes, and they're coming thick and fast right now. But in this one, we talk about the Scrum Mastery lockdown task that our contestants have just completed. It was all about finding your most valuable object. So I'll let you listen on to hear that. Let's play the jingle. Hello, Jeff. Hello, Paul. Hello, everybody. How are you? Same old, same old. <laughs> Nothing's changed. It's a little bit colder today, so I'm in jeans for the first time in a while. I've still got my shorts on. Right, it's going to take me a, take a, a serious uh, change for me to get to, to get out my shorts now. We're, yeah. in, we're we're nearly in July, mate. Nearly in July. Is that it? Is that it's, a, the, it's a mental thing, is it? If you if you yeah. get out of shorts now, that's admitting defeat. It feels very strange for me to put a pair of trousers on. I'll, I'll, I'll say that if if we have to go back to trousers. So uh, yes, <clears throat> what have you what have you got there to drink, my friend? Well, I've got. I'll show it show it to the camera. Force majeure, Ooh. which Ooh. I think is quite relevant. Uh, do you know what force majeure means? Isn't it like a like a like a act of God type thing. Yeah, okay. and so, uh, and, uh, yeah, not necessarily an act of God, but an act of power outside of our control, I think. But yeah, it yeah. has become sort of known as act of God. I think, well, I think it was in the olden days, it was considered act of God. It's a, it's a common clause in the contract, isn't it? If there's anything that can't be predicted, then um, put it down to force majeure and the contract exactly, is null yeah. and void. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a non-alcoholic Belgian beer and uh, this um, so Belgian beer is usually quite alcoholic. This one smells like a beer. Doesn't smell like beer flavored squash like some of them. And so the first thing that gets me is a little bit of banana. They do like their Ooh. they do like their fruit in Belgium. I think their fruit beers, uh, and it tastes like a beer. I, I'll be honest. I don't. I I'll be. I'm surprised by that. It normally. Normally, you could tell a non-alcoholic beer, I think, from an alcoholic beer. This one's a little bit... Although, it does, definitely doesn't taste like a Belgian beer, in that alcoholic no. sense. But it does taste like a non-alcoholic Belgian beer. It's quite good. It's very malty. Quite sweet. No, it's not necessarily a good or a bad thing, but um, it is. I'd say it's slightly fruity. I probably shouldn't be drinking it from the bottle, but... <laughs> but hey. Um, yeah, that's really nice, actually. If, you, if you're looking for a, a non-alcoholic Belgian beer, I would, that's worth a go. I yeah, think it's made good. by Triple, but spelt T-R-I-P-E-L. Very good. What have you got? Well, today, Jeff, I have a bottle of cider that has been made by my friend. Okay. Um, and this is a friend, My fr- I'll give him a mention, he's called Rob. I think you've met Rob once or twice. Mm-hmm. Um, and Rob lives down the road. I can hear a child, but we should explain why we can hear children. No. It's not because we... <laughs> It'd be um, one of my neighbours, I expect. It's, uh, it's just neighbours. We're not... Uh, there aren't... <laughs> the children. The background noise of children is not part of the, officially part of The good thing is, I can't hear them because I've got headphones on, but everybody else can. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, my friend Rob has uh, made me. He's into a lot. His lockdown project has become cider making. Okay. Right? So he's um, he's got into his uh, homemade ciders, and he's made me a couple. And this is an, one that he get, he dropped on my doorstep the other day. 
Uh, you can ignore the bottle because the bottle is just in a, a, a spare bottle. But he's uh, he hasn't named it or anything. But he's mixed it with um, flavorings. So it's apple juice, which he's um, which he's brewed. I'll let you see this on camera. Mm. I haven't opened this yet. I don't know what it's going to be like. But um, it's supposed to be. He's he's described it as apple pie cider. Okay. So he's put a bit of pastry in there, is he? <laughs> No, no pastry. But if I give it a smell, it smells like um, a cinnamon in it. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a bit of nutmeg. Basically, I think he infused okay. a few spices and herbs into it. I'll just give it a taste. What's oh, nice. It probably doesn't taste too much of it, but it certainly you can, you can sm it got a bit of a Christmassy smell to it. Mm -hmm. You haven't well, put any ice with fun. this one. Mm. No, I just had it straight. It's a, got a little bit. Of, it's a bit cloudy, but there's no sediment in it. It's um, it's probably quite strong. He didn't tell me the strength of it, but uh, and he hasn't named it. But perhaps we can um, try and come up with a name for it. Yeah, but kind of a apple, well, apple pie cider, I suppose it is. There you so go. A bit of cinnamon, a bit of nutmeg in there. Apple pie dough. Mmm. Apple pie dough. Yeah. So um, that's good. Tastes like a dessert, mm. as in, and that's quite a popular, very sweet with me. Cheers, Rob. Yeah, thank you, Rob. If he ever goes into, um, gives up his job and goes into cider making, I'm sure that one will be one of his creations. So, what's been going on, mate? What's been going Another on? week. Yeah, I've, it's, um, I mean, this is the sum, yeah, I'm missing, I want a holiday. But yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to book. I'm not going to be one of these people that's rushing into booking a holiday. They're, 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 they're sensing that might happen, aren't they? I think even, even now we're, um, Accommodation websites, uh, the traffic's going through the roof, isn't it? Given that the fact we're a week away from lockdown easing, I'm not going to say lockdown ending because it, I don't think it, it isn't ending completely. It's not back to normal, is it? No. I think it's it's the biggest. The UK is about to see the biggest shift in in uh, or the biggest easing of lockdown conditions mm. on the fourth of July that we've seen for for a while. Yeah, I think we will maybe have um, a couple of weekends couple of weekends a couple of days over a weekend somewhere else um, but that would be um, you know, a, 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 a somewhere else somewhere that we know like yeah. a, a, a place owned by someone we know that will let us stay there <coughs> that would be our break we've um, we've arranged a house swap with my parents that's one thing oh yeah so um, I'm lucky enough that I've got parents that live in Devon so uh, we were literally ringing them up saying, do you mind if we come down and uh, well, perhaps don't want to stay with you, but we'd like you to move out while we stay in your house. And uh, But you can come and stay at our house. And luckily my parents are quite um, accommodating like that. So they're coming to stay here and we're going to stay there mm. during the uh, summer holidays when the kids are off. So that's, and then we've booked a week. Uh, that's one week. And we've booked, so we have, we've done the opposite to you. We've booked, uh, we've booked a week in Pembrokeshire. Okay. Um, for getting in for the summer holidays to try and just to see a different set of four walls. So we bought the cottage out there. So. Good for you. Bit of isolation in a different, completely different place. <laughs> just to do more of the same thing. But no, it should be, um, should be fun. Should be fun. Yeah, so there we are. It's, um, yeah, I do sense a, a, a change. So, we are we're closing the social distance in this week, aren't we? Because yes. because pubs are going to open, people are going to be doing more things. People have more freedom. Uh, they they won't necessarily want to be stuck on a screen with us on a Friday evening <laughs> anymore. So rather than um, get to the point where just we're there on our own, looking a bit sad and lonely, we thought we'll oh, yeah. we'll stop it while it's still going strong. Uh, we're going to have a bit of a bit of a blowout this week, aren't we? Just to just to celebrate. Was, yeah, we'll have a bit of an end of season party. Yeah. Um, just because, and it seemed to didn't it? it seemed like the most logical time. Not a logical, but not the only time. But it seemed like a natural point to change. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, to go back to a, a, a re something called a real pub. Yeah. Where we can sit in a real <clears throat> beer garden and drink from a real pipe glass that was you know it has been nice open. hasn't it i mean a couple of quite a few of our regulars actually said that yeah they're going to miss it and it's nice it's been nice we've, we've 
got to know people from all over the world. I th- yeah, I think we've developed, you know, um, proper kind of friendships and relationships, you know, um, that, I mean, it's probably, I don't know how many we've done, but I'm, I'm imagining it's like 12 or yeah. so, 10 to 12 of them that we've done. And yeah, we've seen a lot of the same faces. And I, I feel, we said before, I think, just after one of them finished, that I feel comfortable to actually go out for a real drink with some of these people now. That you know, if you've broken that ice, that you can, uh, it wouldn't feel strange, wouldn't yeah. feel odd to be in a pub with some of those people. So, uh, so thank you to those those regulars that did come every week, or certainly a lot of those weeks. Mm. It's been it's been good for our our sanity, or certainly my sanity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. And the other thing we've got going on is our challenge. Yes, yeah, so we've got some more videos to review. Yes, yeah, so have you had a look at them? I have. Have they all I was just flicking through the stuck order, within the sure. rules, referee? Um, I think it was the only one I saw that had like a maybe a one second. It was literally on the, but it was like an like a the clo- the edit close. It wasn't it wasn't particularly part of the video. So I'm going to be more lenient this week. Okay. Gonna, I'm feeling in a good mood. I'm not going to penalise anyone in particular for uh, for bad timekeeping okay. this time round. And, and no other breaches? Um, no, well, I think the task was a lot more well, a lot more um, I'm going to say straightforward, but there was less um, potential really to slip up, I think, on this one. Okay. So I think, um, I think it was quite We should probably explain what the challenge was, shouldn't we? Yeah. <clears throat> Go for it. So they were our, our contestants this week well, last week, were challenged to find their most valuable item and to describe in 60 seconds or less why that item was so particularly valuable to them. And we had a a range of different items, didn't we? Yeah, and it was... um, There were some that I expected, and we'll go through these now, but there were some that I didn't expect, and there's some that... um, well, I think for me personally, it resonated in in different ways, which I think okay. there was a nice mix. There was a nice mix to those. Things. Where should we start then? Well, what we normally do, Jeff, is we normally go in reverse order of submission. So the the one at the bottom, the kind of the first entry we had, I think, was Vikas. Okay. I think we'll start with him first. Okay. The most valuable thing that I have is this office diary. Each time I start a project, I start with this diary. It was uh, it was kind of a diary of sorts, wasn't it? Like a, his his work notebook, in effect. Yes. And he he basically captured. We didn't see the insides of it, but he was cap- he was telling us that all the things that he's captured about the projects that he's been on in the past, risks that have come yeah. up, um, decisions that were made, you know, who was on it, where the challenges were, all the deliveries and things like that. Um, and he was saying it was valuable to him because it helped him avoid making the same mistakes twice and he was able to find patterns across projects and teams so there was uh, he was saying that certain risks tend to pop up quite frequently uh, which which allows him to you know learn from that and make sense of make sense of things I suppose I was worried about the knife (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yes for those of so, you that weren't couldn't see and could only listen <laughs> instead of a pen or a pointer he was using quite a hefty blade to oh. uh, to indicate what was in his book and there was obviously no he made no mention of the said knife until the very last moment when a bit of a you know, kind of punchline was oh he should have been using a, a pen instead of the knife but that's that's. I'd like to say now that's typical Vikas. Yep. That's that's kind of it. That's how he, he tends to send these videos in. Okay. All right. Any thoughts on that one? I... Um, well, again, I think it was a nice. It, it was a. Um, I think the value there is obviously in memories and kind of. Um, there's the value to Vikas certainly was was the past and experience. Yeah. It reminded him of his experiences. And those, so maybe the value in itself was that was more abstract. The, the 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 book or the diary, get the value was in perhaps what was what was the, the words were about rather than the words themselves. So it was kind of like a it was a, a, a key to a, a memory or a key to a valuable experience. I saw it as data. So I, I did say it was memories, 
Um, but one thing I liked about it, and I'm guilty of this, is I don't capture enough stuff. So I rely on my memory, yeah, which isn't great all the time. Whereas he's written it down, and he's got the data that he can access. And I think that's that's a really useful thing in terms of helping make sense of complex and complicated things. You can actually look at and, and join dots and make patterns and make connections and see cause and effect and so on. And it's while it isn't completely subjective because it's his, it's still his perspective at that point in time. It is a lot more objective than his memory. Yeah. Um, so I, I thought that was a really good thing. I've got some. You can just about see them here. Yeah, I've got my own versions of these, and you know these are from from my past engagements. Which you know, if I read through, they would they would help me remember stuff. But I don't read so through they, them enough. So are they? Random? Are they not random words? But are they mind you know, kind of sound bites from something you've done or diary entries or how? What form do they take in for you? Yeah, they would be scribbles. So I don't right. suppose anybody else would be able to make sense of them. Uh, right. Scribbles or doodles from things like coaching sessions or workshops. Maybe you know plans for workshops or um, retrospectives that I've been part of in the past. Um, people that I've been coaching, you know, their progress over time and, and things like that. My my thoughts. Also, my my supervision notes will be in there as well. So when and when I'm getting coaching supervision, um, my my development and stuff. But I don't see what what I I thought what was good there from Vikas's point of view is he obviously actually does look through that stuff and and it's yeah. not just written off it's and then just... never looked at again. Yeah. I'm just making some notes here for for later on. <laughs> Never to be looked at again. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, good stuff. So you, we'll come to your scores later. Yeah. Um, you know, be thinking about your scores for the guest. Next one on my um, list here is uh, Stefan. Okay, Stefan. I think. Yeah. So we'll play a quick clip of Stefan. This is my most valuable item. It's a certificate by ESA, the European Space Agency, recognizing my work on the Lisa Pathfinder project. So uh, he openly said it's only a piece of paper, but it was what that yeah. that piece of paper meant for him. It was it was a token, yeah. wasn't it? What did you get from it? So this is value in. Uh, I'm going to say recognition, mm -hmm. uh, kind of um, value. So it's a bit different to Vikash, where I think value was in. Um, memories or as you said data but this was about this is a different type of value this is about value for being i get, getting gaining value from being recognized and being um, and he mentioned the word pride he said i get every time i look at this i get an enormous sense of pride about what i what i achieved so value in achievement value in um, um self self value mm -hmm. so um i got uh, maybe yeah. did you get the same impression as me here because he didn't spell it out for me but it sounded like it was almost like a voluntary extracurricular project that he took part in it wasn't his job as such he didn't explicitly say that um i could see how that could be the case but um certainly from stefan's previous videos we've seen he's obviously got a keen interest in academia and, and kind of certainly sciences and and um he was in his previous videos. He talked a lot about the brain and neurology and things like that. So he's obviously a very clever man, mm -hmm. um, and I, I, that that's certainly um, testament. If if that is the case, voluntary or not, it's obviously uh, it's the European Space Agency. Yeah, so, and um, there's I, obviously yeah. No, I got I got knowledge. that impression that it was it wasn't part of his job, and it, 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 he was working with people that he didn't know, and it was you know, and it was research, and it was the unknown, and contributing to something voluntarily and uh, that sense of purpose shone through and I th the fact that it was just a piece of paper as he says just a piece of paper but that probably meant more to him than any kind of monetary or financial reward that he he would have been offered there and in cases like that where you're actually following something that you're really interested in you're passionate about sometimes a, a monetary reward can actually reduce the value that you get from it in a, mm. in, a in a strange way um that's what I took from that. So it's, it's like that symbol. But again, so so on this, is the value the the piece of paper, or is the is the value the link that the paper provides to 
what was valuable, which is the experience. You talked a lot about the group dynamic that you had, the the sense of achievement, bleeding edge mm -hmm. kind of um, technology and yeah. like that. So if it was, I don't know, maybe not a certificate, but maybe it was a, looking at my desk, uh, a, um, you know, a piece of, a, a placemat, <laughs> um, something, a screwdriver, yeah, these are odd things I've got on my desk, but some it doesn't it doesn't have to be a piece of paper. It could have been something that's seemingly innocuous. Yeah, but that was on the desk, or that was it's the trigger in the in the lab, or whatever. It is. Yeah, it's a trigger. It's an anchor. No, I think that's a yeah, that's a fair point. I think it's and as a referee, you're you're right to make that point. The item itself isn't so much what's valuable. It's it's the reminder, the trigger of the memory and the feeling of pride that is, is valuable to him. Because if that piece of paper disappeared, he would still be able to conjure up that feeling, those memories. Yeah. Okay, no, fair point, I'm referee. Just making some more yeah. notes there, Jeff, for our debrief later, so yes. Okay, good. all right, so who's next? Uh, next on my list is Mike. Mike, okay, so we'll play a short clip of Mike. So I want to talk about my most valued object. That's an implant into my spine. About 20 years ago, I had a spinal injury and it was really bad. And that's a very different, different item. Yes. Probably the most different of, of all of the entries, I would say, from memory. And um, yeah, very much so. There's a, it wasn't actually, you couldn't, he wasn't holding the object because the object was part of him, right? So yeah. It, but he, there was an image of what the object looks like. For the for, if you haven't seen the video, or if you didn't get the full um, gist of it from the video, um, it's a um, Mike talked about a spinal injury he's he had, and he had an operation to. I assume it was to insert mm. a, 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 what looked like a, a plastic or kind of a prosthetic. Uh, piece of his spine or you know, extension to his spine, whatever it might have been. I'm not, I'm not sure of the details, but it's basically got got him around a lot of spinal pain. Mm. He's been having it for a long time. So that's that's a an emotional kind of um, value, which is really it's, that would be very difficult for us to um, put a put a value on ourselves because we haven't experienced that. That's pain. There's a value in, in an absence of pain for him. And well, a deeply emotional. I think it's. Um, he's gained. Yeah, I mean, I, I've had a, a, compared to my nothing on the scale, but I have had issues with my back over the years, and I know just you know, you've had cracked ribs and things, and, the, and the, once you're in, if you've got any kind of physical pain going on, that limits your ability to to value almost anything else, doesn't it? it limits your ability to even value the art, the act of breathing, let alone yes. anything else. Yeah. And so to have that have that pain removed by an item, a thing, yes. you can imagine how much that means to him and all of the people he interacts with. Mm. They, everybody else benefits from that as well. Because um, when I'm in pain, I'm not a great person to be around. Um, no. I don't take pain very well. So, yeah, I think that was a, a, a really interesting choice. Yeah, you know, it's something that if you when comparing it, it's not so much a token, it is an actual thing. Because if, if we took away that piece of paper, Stefan could still have the good feelings. If you took away that item, mm. you, you might would struggle. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's, it's not visible. It's, a, it's no. yeah, in itself, it may well only if you look at financial cost or something, the actual physical item itself might have been incredibly cheap to manufacture. Yeah, it probably, it, yeah, probably not very expensive. It probably wasn't cheap to have the operation, um, but no. uh, yeah, that's certainly the expertise involved in in the the operation, the, you know, the the procedure. I can imagine. Yeah, there's, but it's for me, it had again. It's it's interesting, isn't it? How value can have can generate all that this. That type of attachment, if you like, there's that generated just the way that Mike told the story. And I've written down here the link to previous, and uh, when we talked about telling stories mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and previous uh, challenges, I was really hooked in by his story behind that item. Yeah, and you know, mainly because he talked a lot about the pain he was in, the um, his 
um, his day to day, and that was it. Made it very real, very, and then you, I could I could see and understand the value better because it was more real. Well, I think anybody anybody can. Um, it's personalizable to everyone, isn't it? Pain. Everyone knows what yeah. pain is like, and everyone wants to avoid pain, uh, and knows what it's like to have that pain resolved. So, yeah, everyone can empathize and put themselves in that position to a degree, even if they can't imagine the amount of pain that Mike was in. Um, yeah. So, and that's that's one of the the aims of the story, isn't it? To make it personalizable. So yeah, we 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 all we were all connected with that. We could all see how if we were in that situation how that thing would have value to us even if it doesn't have objective value to us right now yeah okay good 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 moving on who's next uh greg greg okay here's greg's video of what his most valuable item is my favorite object is a badminton racket you may ask why a badminton racket well i used to play badminton to win um I don't as much anymore. I, I I play it for all the things that I can get from badminton. So, so yeah, the the idea he's he's obviously a big badminton fan. It's come up before, um, in, in conversation, and I like the way that he tried to link, you know, use the the metaphor of the game to the metaphor of of an agile team, that kind of thing, mm. uh, and actually that that racket itself, is probably only worth a, a few dollars, isn't it? Mm. But it's what it means to him. Yeah. Uh, so it, I, I'm sure, as well as the piece of paper on Stefan's wall, if you took it away, he could get another one, mm -hmm. uh, and he could still remember playing badminton. Um, so it's not that valuable in itself. But I'm sure, given the choice of that racket or any other racket, he would like his racket. Mm. There was a thing about golf clubs, wasn't there? Um, People, there was a um, study done where people were given some golf clubs to play with that they said had been used by Tiger Woods. Right. And um, they played they played materially better, believing they were playing with Tiger Woods' golf clubs, even though they weren't Tiger Woods' golf clubs. They believed they were. They believed they were better. They played better. Um, and that's that sense of of luck and and belief and superstition and stuff. And that. Well, that can have an, a positive effect. It can have a negative effect as well. We can, we can hang on to things more than we should, longer than we should. We can hang on to beliefs longer than we should, habits longer than we should. Um, yeah, what did you think? Yeah, I think it would have been. I was hoping when he when he said when he showed the racket, I was hoping there was more of a story behind the racket itself that maybe there was it was tied to a particular game or a particular um, memory he had or something like that but I, again so there was an interesting link to agile generally but he, and the, i think the most important thing that for me that he talked about was this idea of fun and, and and there's no shame in just saying this this for me is what i value is is um having fun and, and, and enjoying exercise with other people, the social element to it. So, yeah, I think it was, um, yeah, had it been a different, I, I got this, I did get the sense it could have been any racket. I didn't, I, you know, I wanted to know, was there more something that he, that was a racket he'd had for how many years, or five years, 10 years. Mm. And yeah, even though he's restrung it a hundred times, it's still, you know, that triggers broom idea. Yeah. She probably doesn't mean anything to you. No. And it only falls on horses. No, I don't think so. Um, yeah, so, yeah, very good. Okay, all right. Who's next? Jags. Jags. Okay, here's Jags's little video of what he found to be his most valuable item. Walking boots are the most valuable thing I have. Yes, they're old. They're battered. No longer waterproof. But they're my friends. So back to his mountaineering again. Yeah. I think I have a pair of those boots. I was going to say, because uh, you've told stories about your shoes that have been to or five continents or something like that. Yes. And I, I immediately thought of your boots when you, um, when he's doing Jags started telling his story. So they, yeah, they, the ones that Jags was talking about there, I, they are, I think, the same type of boot that I wore when I went on the Bear Grylls experience. 
which are a different pair of boots to the ones that I've worn on five continents. Oh, okay. But um, but yeah, I can I can see how uh, a boot, uh, an item of clothing, can bring back memories. And given your point about telling stories, he he managed yeah. to get a bit of storytelling in there, didn't he? Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, it's not so much the the shoe itself, as he said, it's not waterproof anymore. So it's probably not actually a valuable item in its own right. Yes. Is there a sense then that maybe you can get too attached to something from a sentimental reason when actually you'd be better it be in your interests to actually buy a different pair and, and get rid of that. You don't need yeah. the item to have the memory. Yeah. And that that idea of we we don't know um we can't benefit from what we don't know. So it's you know, this idea of comfortable mediocrity. I'll stick with the boots that I've got because I know that they're okay, yeah. but I don't really know how good a new pair could be mm-hmm. because I'm too I'm too attached to the to what I've got now. And it's, that's the same in in many cases, pro, even processes wise. Let's stick with what we know now because there might, you know, it's easier to to fail with something we know or to to stick with something we know than try to try something new that the the unknown yeah. that we don't know that might not work, mm-hmm. but it might be better. So who's next? So um, yeah, let's go with Anshul. <laughs> okay, here is Anshul's video. My most valuable item at this point in my life is this book right here. Uh, it's it's got some nice uh, graphics to look into. The paper smells nice, and and it just feels nice in my hands. So it's similar to Vikas, isn't it? It's similar to um, valuing a. A reference, a guide to how he's worked, and it's obviously he's uh, it's probably devalued in the sense that it's not a new book anymore. Yeah. So if you didn't see the video, it's I think it was uh, Craig Larman and Bass Bodder's um, book, large. Um, <laughs> I should know what it's called, should I? Um, it was about less, wasn't it? It was. It was about less. Um, large Bass had autographed it. Yeah. yeah. So. You can, but it's obviously it had a lot of feathered edges. It had a lot of post-its in it, which he's added his own notes. But again, he's obviously there's a lot more value in that book now because he's of the stories of the of the the implementations he's gone through, the, uh, the perhaps the, the mistakes he's made, the things he's tried, the things that he hasn't tried. So it was very much he took value from this guide, this book as a. Uh, there's a, probably also a memory of a, a, there's a bit of achievement in there. Yeah. So similar to Stefan, that there's a sense of this the stuff that worked, and obviously got a lot of he got a lot of uh, maybe some recognition for that. There's mm-hmm. a theme of recognition for maybe things that have worked very well. Yeah. Maybe the things that haven't worked very well. Yeah, I I do like the fact that uh, um I can't, there's a, there's a Japanese phrase, isn't there? The the when you buy books and just let them pile up, never read them. I, I, I don't. I like it when people actually not just read the book, but actually use it, yeah, you know, and reuse it, regardless of what it is. Uh, I like the fact that he hasn't just bought it, read a bit of it, put it on the shelf, but he's you know scribbled in it. It's got his stories in there. I don't. I find it hard to understand because I find it very difficult to find enough space in an actual textbook to write what I want. Okay, you can put post notes mm-hmm. in there and things, but. Um, but yeah, his learnings in there, his memories in there. Um, there is a risk of you know, following a book too much. I'm not suggesting that Angel has done this, but yeah. taking a a framework, a methodology, um, there is a risk that you can follow the textbook too much. And, and you know, life is is more than it's always more complicated than any textbook will will make out. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess that's where that's what all his scribbles and all of his. Uh, these things have they've done. They've added the context. They've added the, uh, you know, they, they've filled in the gaps or explained the grey. Those kinds of things. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah, very good. So just Faye this week because uh, Rob was out of town. So Rob uh, in, has had the opportunity to go and see some family or take some family time. Good luck to him. And so it's just Faye. Here is Faye. But this is my most valuable object. About eight years ago, I was coaching some teams inside a state agency here in Ohio. And I was with them about nine or 10 months and then went to a different client. And about a year later, I ran into several of the team members 
at uh, our local agility conference and they wanted me to have this and they wanted to tell me about all the ways they had continued to improve after I left. So I guess it must have made it a little bit easier for, for just one of them rather than having something that they both yeah so that, that, that's probably a, a happy accident that Rob was out of town this week. But I is it just me I couldn't I apologize to Faye I couldn't really see no I couldn't was. see what it was either <laughs> I couldn't see and I don't think she actually explained it did she what the item was that she was holding no it was something that was given to her and I was kind of making assumptions in my mind of what it might be whether it was a you know, a building pass, but it looked too big for that. Was it a greetings card, but it looked too small for that? I wasn't quite sure what it was, um, but in a way it doesn't matter, because no. it was just a token. Just like um, the the piece of paper on the wall didn't matter what it was for Stefan, although you know, it's it was something specific, but it didn't have to be. Um, so yeah, token of appreciation, success, yeah. You know good story it's quite hard to know whether you've been successful as a coach you know mm. at that moment in time you know, it's usually some way down the line before you get a feeling of whether something has actually worked or not whether you and so she said yeah agility didn't die when the coaches left you know, you're never going to know until later on are you so i think there's also we can talk a bit um, more about this as well but we tend to attach value to things that we've been given. So, mm -hmm. so you think about presents or gifts, um, and again, they could be relatively meaning, uh, a kind of low monetary value, but the fact is that, so again, so things that my kids have given me, like pictures, I'll show you a picture now. Um, but, reaching up to the wall. Things like that, right? Oh, it looks like it was drawn by a three-year-old. <laughs> but it says, to dad, I love you forever. And it's just a picture of my daughter that she's drawn of herself. And it's things like that that has, you know, you can't sell that on eBay. You can't, uh, uh, you, you can't put that in an art gallery. But those are things which, because they're given to me and they're personal, there's an attachment, isn't there? We place value on personal gifts that we that we that we receive and yep. i think that i got i got and again I, I got the impression there was an agile theme to the to, to the reason she was given the gift yeah. but i seem to attack i seem to remember i went away from that thinking that Faye um was attached to it because she was it was given to her it was something that as a, maybe as a, as a thank you as mm -hmm. a as a, a parting gift yeah 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 there was definitely that um I said, I, I may, I'm perhaps projecting my own views on this, but I, said, I find it difficult when you're, when you're really coaching, it's, it's very difficult to know. You don't get that direct knowledge or feedback about good job, bad job, because it's not a case of something's done and you can see the the points on the board or whatever. It's, it's usually, there's usually quite a lag effect. And especially if you're not part of that organization, quite often you don't see the results until you've actually left the organization a lot of the time. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's 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 um, it's difficult role in that regard. So that I can see why that would that would add value, a bit of validation, um, and you know we need feedback to know whether we are getting better or how to get better. And you know, with that lag in place, it's it can be quite difficult. And that, so that's an interesting point because also we can value doesn't have to be. This is a bit harder to to explain and to to think about, but value doesn't have to be physical valuable valuable could be something that's that was said to you mm -hmm. so it could be something that you remember that was said mm -hmm. uh, it could be something that was written down so like a testimony i think we've read out so in sprint reviews reading out testimonials from customers are things that you don't you know they seem quite trivial very easy very cheap to, to to get but the value that they carry with in terms of motivational value within teams in terms of building empathy mm -hmm. so it might not be something you can hold or that you can um you can sell on ebay but it might be something that that's the difference that's the essence of what is going to motivate your scrum team or your agile team yeah obviously we, we we put them into a bit of a corner by requiring them to come up with their most valuable object but the idea of and actually if you think about that then i think quite a few of them were actually forced into finding an object to represent mm. a feeling. 
But what none of them did was, um, I think you, I think in every case, you wouldn't have put any of those value, the value of those items, monetary value, no. greater than a hundred dollars. If whatever that. it might be, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's quite hard to tell in some case. But the actual, it's interesting that none, despite we we, we gave a, a general brief, but none, no one should chose expensive. Mm. That's the key word. No one chose anything expensive. So that's a. Some sometimes the things that have the most value don't have to be the most expensive things. Yeah. Yeah, and there are value is a multifaceted thing, isn't it? It's 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 rarely just one aspect to value. And I'm not just talking about product backlog here, but yeah, there's usually a, an opportunity cost to something. So there's the value there's the value in the data in Vikas's uh, book. If he lost that, he's lost the data. Um, but he's also lost. I presume. I w I'm guessing here. I'm, I'm maybe what just. For someone who's that fastidious about capturing data, I imagine he's probably got more than one book um, mm. filed away somewhere. So there's the there's the set, there's the collection, there's the um, yeah, there's all that. And that's interesting because similar Vikash and Anshu were similar, weren't they? But because if if I've written down here, not just the value of the of the item, but the value of not having it. So do they? Not, if they lost that book, yeah. <clears throat> they wouldn't become bad bad coaches. They wouldn't become bad scrum masters. They wouldn't f instantly forget everything. No, right now I well no they wouldn't absolutely. Uh, but this is actually bringing me on. It's bringing me to some kind of thought process for evaluating them because this is going to be quite tricky because they're all really good. Uh, <laughs> but I would say that those two, so Vikas and Anshul, are probably the most fragile. So if they lost their thing, they've lost it. They can't, it's, it's, it's gone. It's ir irreplaceable. Yeah. Whereas if Jags lost his shoes, he's still got the memory. Yeah. Yeah. And he can always go and buy and it. Can, exact. Yeah. Uh, Same pair he's, of he's probably got a photograph. He's probably got something else that reminds him of that. And he's still got the memory. Uh, Greg has, has can, can go and play badminton again. He can get another. Um, get another racket and you still got the feeling yeah, so of playing that's true yeah so when where there's data there's obviously it's harder to replicate that it's harder to uh, repeat that isn't yeah it? so I, I would say they're the most fragile now would they make them a worse coach now i don't think they would but it could and the only reason it could is if they rely on the the actual looking up of the data too much or they place too much of a great attachment on the actual object and this is where that idea of superstition might, might be too strong a word. But people can place too much power in an actual object. Mm. So, uh, it's almost like a weakness. If I haven't got it, I can't do it. And you can see that at a you know, very, very young level with kids and their, their, their blankets or their cuddly toys or their dummy or something. Um, you know, I can't be happy unless I've got this. I'm not comfortable unless I've got this. Now, I'm not suggesting that either Vikesh or Angela are, are, are like that at all. But if some if someone places so much value in something irreplaceable like that, then it's a really fragile place to be. The amount of, mm. taking this back to kids again, the amount of parents who um, have said to me over the years, "Oh, it's, it's absolutely terrible. We've lost Dinky or whatever they called it. You know, someone's favourite doll. They take it everywhere or go to sleep with it or something." Why would you only ever have one as a parent? Why would you buy something that you can that you can't replace? You know, we've always if any if like any of our kids get attached to something it's, it's all we've always got backups yeah, <laughs> we did the same thing jocelyn had i think three of the same bunny mm -hmm. because she used to bite and and she used to chew the end of the nose and it just ended up smelling and also she, i think she actually did actually loop she left one somewhere yeah. day out somewhere she, but we had a backup so i would say they were the most fragile those two okay is that going to have a bearing on your scores, do you think, Jeff? Um, well, I've got to find some way of separating them. Uh, yeah. Because I, I think they're all really, really good, uh, really good submissions. And I can absolutely empathise with every single one of them. Uh, so it is quite hard to split them. So I think that may well may well come into it. So Jags, Shoes, Greg, Badminton, Racket, Stefan, the piece of paper, Faye, some kind of token. Not sure what it was. Those were all, <laughs> all four effectively 
inconsequential objects mm-hmm. that reminded them of something important to them and, and, and evoked a really powerful feeling that was quite core to who they are and, and their personal values. So again, I'd probably group those together in that the the, van, the items themselves weren't necessarily valuable. It was the feeling that those items triggered that were valuable. Uh, and I said, because of that, I think they're they're less fragile, and the value will re- will, will be more resilient. Mm-hmm. So I would say those four are probably slightly going to do slightly better than Vikas and Anshul in my scoring which leaves Mike and I think I think for me pain is such a fundamental thing I think if you're in pain you can't even enjoy the simple things in life and those around you can't enjoy things and and they, they, they can't help you either I think that it's if you if you want to try and deal with the complex you've got to have the simple things in place and so i think that is yeah that for me is is the standout for me i think that if i could give any one of those people what they've got there that would be the first person i would give that thing to mm. if that makes sense okay that's a very solid <clears throat> rationale are you going to put some numbers behind these okay all right so we've been going for seven for the seven, seven points for mike mm-hmm. so that's, that's sort of the easy one i think the next group so jags greg stefan and Faye, let's say five points each and then let's say three points to vikash and Anshul. okay scored done Okay, so the leaderboard at the moment, Jeff, looks like this. Uh, propping up the table, we have Stefan at the moment with nine points. And we have Team USA, Robin Fay with 11. Greg from New Zealand with 12 points. In, well, joint fourth place with Vikas with 12 points. Then the top three look like this. We have Jags going strong with 13 points. Mike up to second place with his win this week with 15 points. But Anshul still clinging on to first place at the moment with 17 points very good very good I like that one no it's good and what's nice is that it's a nice way to think about the fact that the value is highly subjective what I say is valuable is is, might not necessarily be what you think is valuable what I think is a valuable (laughs) point in itself um and sometimes the easiest way to prioritise a product with a product owner is to say, instead of what do they want, what's causing you the most pain at the moment? So you say about pain. Pain is a good identifier with what to do next. Mm. And where is your pain? for you? Where's your user's pain? And that might help direct how you prioritise a product backlog. If you try and take it away from the calculation, the, the, um, the algorithm around money, mm. where is pain? Where can, we, where, where can we remove pain at the moment? It might be an easier way to identify where to start. Yeah, yeah. I've talked about different types of motivators in the past, and that works for customers as well as, as team members, you know, away from motivators and towards motivators. Yeah. Uh, and the idea of you know, getting away from something that you don't like to be or don't like to have uh, is, is, is incredibly powerful. You know, remove the pain. Um, it's It's powerful to a degree it's generally not as powerful as as, a, as an attractive alternative future but you need to get rid of pain before you can really imagine a positive alternative future okay. um, so product owners weigh that up and people don't buy the service do they? they don't buy the product they buy how it makes them feel they mm-hmm. don't buy insurance they buy peace of mind um, that kind of thing so that's I think it is it is really important to bear in mind what what what, what is value, um, and whether that's to do with rewarding people, motivating people, prioritizing things, whatever it is, get into what what people appreciate, what people like, what pe- what pain people have, um, and you generally make better decisions, right? Yeah, very good. Cool. Nice summary. Thank you very much. I enjoyed that. All right. Nice work. Well done, everybody. Well done, contestants.
it's still anybody's game, I believe. Very much so. We're, we're going to do six tasks. Yeah, so we're halfway so through. We're halfway through. Yeah. All right. Cheers, my friend. See you next time.